So I recently made a video called creating a bootloader within 10 minutes. However, some people correctly pointed out that we wasn't actually loading anything and it was just a boot sector that wrote hello world. Well, you're completely correct. So in this video, we're going to do it again, but properly. So we're going to be using 8086 assembly language. Let's begin. We're using NASM assembler for this. We're going to say bit 16 because we're going to be using 16 bit code. We're going to say origin 0x7c00. This is where the BIOS loads us into. We set the origin to this address and then any label offset will have that address appended to it. Next, we're going to create a start label. We're going to stop the interrupts so no interrupt handler interrupts us. We're going to X or AX AX. Simply put, that sets the AX register to zero. If you want to know more about registers, check my other videos. Here we're going to say move DSAX. This moves the uh, zero into the data segment, essentially. Move ESAX, again, zero into the extra segment. Move SSAX, that moves zero into the stack segment. By the way, there's a video course in the description. Check it. It'll teach you how to make your own multi-threaded kernel completely from scratch, including everything we're doing here. Let's set up the stack pointer. We're going to point that to 0x7c00. The stack grows downwards. Next, we're going to start the interrupts again. Let's create a little load message down by here. We're going to say loading kernel and then I'll terminate it. Error message DB disk read error. We're going to null terminate it. We're going to do times 510 minus dollar dash dollar dollar db0 this will ensure that the sector is always uh, 510 zeros up to this point or code whichever comes first and then finally we put in our boot signature which the bios will look for this this code here these two lines it guarantees our boot sector will always be 512 bytes in size which is absolutely required next we're going to say move si load message we're going to move the address of the load message label into the SI register. We're going to call print string. This will output the load message loading kernel. We need to make uh, print string. We'll do that in a moment. Next, we're going to say move BX0X7E00. That's the next sector directly after our boot signature here on line 25. We're going to say move DH1. We're going to load one sector. We're going to call read sectors. Finally, we're going to jump to the loaded kernel. We're going to say jump 0x0000, 0x7e00. Okay, this is the segment. This is the offset. Perfect. All that's now left to do is to create the print string function and the read sectors functions, or subroutines, I should say. Let's start with the print string. We're going to say print string colon dot next char colon. Lod SB. This instruction will load the next character from the load message and store it in the AL register. Let's compare the AL register. Is it an null terminator? If so, we finish printing the string. Jump to done. Move AH Siri H. This is the print function. We're now going to call init 0x10, which will invoke the BIOS and print that character out to the screen. We're going to jump to the next character. That will then print the next character. Finally, we need the done, and when we get it done, we return from the subroutine. Okay, next for the read sectors function. Read sectors, colon. Move AH, 0x02. Move AL, DH. Move CH, 0x00. This is the cylinder, guys, of the disk. Move CL, 0x02. This is the second sector on the disk we want to load, just past our bootloader. Move DH0x00, this is the head on the cylinder disk. Move DL0x80, this is the primary drive. Finally, we invoke init 0x13, which is the BIOS interrupt that we can use for loading from the disk. If there's an error, we'll jump to disk error. If everything's fine, we'll return. Let's define disk error. In disk error, we'll move SI error message and we'll call print string. And then we'll jump forever. Okay, now to create the actual kernel file. So we're in kernel.asm now. Now for our simple kernel file, we're going to say bit 16. We're going to say kernel colon. We're going to say org 0x 
7E00 since that's where we're loaded. And we're just going to print out a simple letter called K for kernel. And then we're going to jump forever. So if we successfully see K after this program runs, then we know we've done this correctly. So now we're going to assemble the boot.asm file. And then we're going to assemble the kernel.asm file. Now we need to use DD to merge them together. So we start with the boot file. We'll call it HTD dot bin because it'll technically be a hard disk a virtual hard disk for writing to there we go 512 bytes copied next we need to append the kernel dot bin file to the end to the second sector not to forget the equal sign there we go that was successful now we have our hdd dot bin which is 520 bytes long because all sectors are 512 bytes wide, we need to increase that size. So it's 1024 bytes, very important. We can do this using dd if equals dev zero, bs equals 512, count equals one, per, uh, and then we're gonna use hg.bim. Do an LSL again, and now we can see it's 1032 bytes. That's great. So now the, the two sectors will be able to be loaded without problems. Let's uh, load up QMU emulator and we can see loading kernel and then we see RK, which means we successfully loaded the next sector in the disk. So yeah, if you guys want to learn how to build an entire multi-threaded kernel from scratch, this 32 bit uh, works with paging and all that. Check the video description where you'll find the video course with an exclusive discount. Check it out now. Hope you love the video. Please subscribe.